Well, hi, good morning, and welcome to my shop here on November 29th. And I've got a couple more things I want to do with this uh, radio before I start the alignment process, which I think is going to be pretty involved. And one of them, I have to thank you to a viewer who sent me an email last night saying, Gent, don't forget about the power line filter capacitor, which is sitting right there. I was forgetting about this capacitor. And the reason for me is uh, it looks like a mica capacitor. Maybe it is a mica capacitor. It's pretty big, though. Uh, I certainly saw it. I mean, you can't not see this. But I never put it together that it's between the power line, it's between the power line, and the chassis, the chassis connection being right there. Same place I've been clipping my uh, meter ground to while I've been working on it. So what's the story with this? Um, what's its purpose? And most importantly, what happens if it fails, if it goes open, or if it should develop a short? What exactly would happen? Um, that's a tricky question here. Um, in my shop, while I'm working on this equipment, it's plugged into this, which is going into an... <coughs> Excuse me. Going into an isolation transformer. And this, as if that's not enough, this is plugged into an isolation transformer too, <coughs> for reasons I can't explain. So... <coughs> There is no reference to ground, earth, power line, neutral, or anything like that with this. So <clears throat> the circumstances while I'm operating this are substantially different from just plugging this into an outlet. <coughs> oh boy. <coughs> Certainly in terms of uh, getting a shock and things like that, especially a shock to ground or earth, you know, through my feet into the floor or something of that sort. <coughs> So it raises questions around how do you test this while it's plugged in here. Uh, so this device comes with a feature for doing exactly that, to find out uh, what kind of relationship there is between the power line and the chassis. That's poorly said. <coughs> the basic relationship here is there is no relationship except this capacitor. So the power line comes in connects to the primary of the transformer and that's it. It doesn't go anywhere else in the radio. Oh, goes over to the on-off switch. It goes over to the on-off switch, but that's all. Except for this capacitor, which is connecting one side of the incoming power over to the chassis. So, if this were shorted, you'd have the chassis connected directly to one side of the power line. What that would do to the radio, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I don't intend on experimenting to find that out. Um, <clears throat> conceivably, nothing. Maybe make it hum. I'm not really sure at all. If this were open circuited, again, I'm not absolutely sure what would happen here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of that is in this kind of radio. This kind of radio has a big power transformer. All the circuitry is on the secondary side of that transformer. Everything here is isolated from the power line with this transformer. It's actually a third level of transformer isolation going on here, except for this guy. So I am holding this probe. This probe is plugged into that device. This device has buttons here for leakage, high side and low side. What are they referring to exactly? Well, I believe they're referring to the uh, to this outlet plug here. Since th this device is isolated from uh, power ground, yeah, I better just stop talking because I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, I did look for a manual for this, and you know, unless I roll out some dollars or spend a lot of time on my computer, I'm not going to see one. Um, so I don't, you know, other than on the face of it, what this looks like, uh, I don't really know. It has this curious um, button on it, which you can't read. It's not going to be readable. It says, 
push to read true leakage current. It's not much of a button here. It barely feels like it moves. I've never seen an effect take place from pushing it. So I wonder if this is stuck in the closed position or whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Let's give this guy a go. So this is on, this is off, switched off. And there's no power to the outlet yet. We're on, I'll put this on high side to start with. And if I touch around with it, that's right on the incoming power line. That's the other power line. Actually, these are the two. This is the end of this wire. It's terminated right here. So the wire leaves here, goes up to the switch. When it comes back, it's this yellow one for here. So on this, so this is installed on the switched side. You can see that on the schematic easy enough. Nothing going on. Now this is curious to me. How this is doing this. Okay, it's less curious now. I reverse the plug. And it remains curious. <clears throat> the reason it's curious is because I think I've got the power turned off here by a double pole switch up here in my uh, power panel. So I think this is a double pole switch here. And once this is open, which it's in the open position now, there should be no connection. But, but, so that's curious to me. Either I'm wrong about my own switch box. It's not so good. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the power here to the radio. The radio is switched off, but now there's 120 volts here. Well, yeah, 120 volts. It's just a little high, isn't it? Go up a little bit here. 115, that's good. So now if I take the leakage probe and I touch the chassis, high side switch, nothing happens, I push the button, nothing happens, try it here. It's just a better contact point, nothing happening. Pick the low side switch. Up she goes. Now what is this telling me? On the face of it, it's telling me there's a leak through this capacitor. Really? There's a brand new capacitor. So at this point, I just don't know what this meter is really, really showing. Now the scale is in microamps. So, you know, this is 600 microamps here. That's a very low current. You know, this is a capacitor. It can pass alternating current. I mean, that's all we're seeing here. So if this guy can make that meter go up, what would changing this capacitor achieve in terms of that meter? What's that meter really telling me? You got me. Because I can't find the manual to read about it. So, but if this capacitor were to fail, and this were plugged in a regular outlet, and it were rotated the unfortunate way, and the set were on or off, in combination with this, perhaps, then the chassis could be sitting at a full 120 volt line voltage and that would kind of consequences for sure in fact seeing this connection here is a little unnerving in a way why is it there well i'm going to drink some coffee and try to find out why this is done exactly i mean i have ideas in my head from previous reading and whatnot i'm not going to go into it until i reread a, a book while i drink my coffee Okay, before we look in my favorite book here, um, what I've heard about these capacitors is a couple things. One is 
to reduce noise interference, I think that's quite true. I think that's probably the primary reason. But another one is to allow the radio to find some amount of grounding back through the power system. And this is, in a case like this radio and all these old radios, has a two-prong plug on it. There's no third prong to reach ground. But when you plug it in, you know, one of these two, the, the wider spade, is actually connected to my water pipe, essentially, through the electric system in my house. So there's a bond wire that runs from my electric fuse box over to the water service pipe and into the earth. The water pipe goes in the earth. So you could make a connection to that. I should turn this off. You should make a connection to that through this. Well, yeah, but that depends upon which way you plug this in. Because one way, and the, let's call it the grounded terminal, maybe this one, might be here, or might be here. If it's here, if this is the grounded terminal in this radio, this will run up through the switch and come back to here. So this would be connected to the grounded terminal. I'm using the word grounded. Maybe I should use the proper word, earthed. The earthed terminal. So, yeah, in kind of a way, the chassis is now finding its way back to my water pipe through the power system. Not the best way to do things. There's electricity flowing on the wires here, of course, to power the radio. There's a slight voltage drop in, in the wires, uh, very slight, but there's something there. Very sensitive radio. Maybe that would introduce a hum or something. But what if you plug it in the other way? When I plugged it in the other way, the hot side of the outlet is here, up through the switch and back. Now the hot side is here. So if the capacitor were shorted, the hot side at 120 volts would be tied directly to the chassis. Of course, you don't want that. And then wh who's blocking whose noise here? So the chassis itself inside the radio is connected to the B minus or the negative, the negative side of things. And that means there can't be any voltage between the chassis and the negative B minus that's in here. They're the same thing basically in this radio. So if this is trying to pick up noise signals, they're not providing any kind of input to any circuits in here. So it's not going to have any effect. So so why, why bother connecting it back here? Uh, the only reason I can think of is that they think there might be noises coming in on the power line. Now we're going back to the 1940s here, 1950s, and the noises are mostly automobile ignition noise from the uh, sparking in the car. And that would make a tick, 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 tick sound, I guess. I can't say I've ever really heard it. And you, you have the, the nice 60 cycle AC coming in here with these blips on it. Tick, 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 tick. And so those tick ticks, which would have higher frequency components in them also, maybe high enough to be radio frequency and maybe high enough to right into the radio itself as a radio frequency, those things are going to see this as a short circuit you'd have to assume that they've sized this so no significant current from 60 cycles will flow through it. And this isn't a great big capacitor here. So the ticks the ticks would be drowned out, but again, it depends which, which way you've plugged it in. Because in one case, you've plugged in the neutral line. Conceivably, there isn't much noise on the neutral side or the uh, earth side of the power system. Conceivably, most of the noise is on the other line. Now, how true that is, I'm not sure. Most of the things we plug into our outlets and that, they, they, they look like they're high, higher power things. Um, they would kind of short out, I would think anyway, noises that would be in the power system. They'd be already shorting them out. The RF noises and that, through the motor windings in a motor, 
and whatnot. Of course, motors make a lot of noise too, don't they? Certain kinds of motors with brushes in them uh, make noise. So that's what I would conclude my, myself is that this is a noise suppressor and nothing more. And if you cut it out, what are you going to hear? Ignition noise from the 1940s? I don't think our cars issue much ignition noise anymore. It's all suppressed quite nicely in the car. How important is it? Now in some cases these capacitors are installed right across the line. So, you, so you'd have a capacitor right here. Or, or maybe on the other side of the switch. It might make a little more sense. It'd be right here. And I, I guess if there's a not common mode noise coming in on the power line, that's another conversation we can tie in here. And thinking that, that right now that the noise is different on the two lines coming in here, you putting a capacitor right across them would, would achieve that would suppress those noises. But they didn't do that here. They've done this. Now, if you do put a capacitor right across the line, and you're now depending upon your house fuse or circuit breaker to operate if that fuse, if that capacitor should develop a short, that might not be the best thing. You could initiate a fire potentially under here, particularly if old paper wax capacitor put into this position and it leaks enough that at 120 volts it starts to heat up maybe maybe you're gonna get a fire that way so maybe it's not too surprising what they've done is this this is safer than putting it right across the line and maybe more effective too I just don't know but the weirdest thing is the reading I get on this instrument Let's look in the book here. This is my favorite book. Um, I think the page has flipped while I was sitting there talking. There we are. Okay, so we'll start by looking at their sort of standard radio circuit. And you can see, there it is. It's exactly what's in this radio, exactly this. And it's even the same size capacitor, 0.1. So C17, we want to know what this book says about C17 say a lot. It's just this paragraph here. Condenser C17 is the line filter. Its action is to remove various RF line disturbances, such as those caused by sparking brushes on electric motors <laughs> from entering the radio. The value of C17 is not critical. Values range from 0 0.002 to 0.5 are found in most various radios. Nowhere in this book does it show a capacitor across the line. It only shows this style here. Now, would you put an ordinary modern capacitor, take, take that one out on the assumption that it's unwise to leave this old guy in here because obviously if it does short out, I, I think you're in serious, I think you're in hot water with this radio. You could remove it and a heck with it. I don't think that would introduce any kind of safety issue, but it might introduce some noise. I mean, we're, we're going to experiment a bit and find out about this, but I, I, I frankly think we're going to find nothing out when I do these experiments. I am on my way to replacing this. So what I'm going to start with is by plugging this into a regular outlet. And I'm not going to use the uh, dim bulbs and all that stuff. I'm going to plug it right in the wall, so to speak. We're going to go one way, and then we're going to go the other way, and we're going to poke around and see what we can find out. Rather than use the instrument over here, I'm much more inclined to just use a, reg whoops, a regular voltmeter. We can use this one here. No problem. To poke around with and see what's going on. Yeah, I think that's going to work out okay. Okay, so plug this in. Switch is off with it right now. So, this time if there's something seriously wrong in this radio, I don't want this, I don't want this in my hand even. Um, it's going to be my host circuit breaker that's going to protect me. 
voltmeter. Oh yeah, volt. We're gonna use this voltmeter now. This is an interesting question already. So this is tied to the power power system uh, ground or neutral in my house, but it also means it's connected to the wide uh, plug. Uh, if you like the wide uh, the wide part of the plug. But yeah, I can plug this radio in this way or that way. Because if I put this ground, let's say here, I'm not going to do it. If I put it here, I got a 50-50 chance that I've shorted out the power plug completely. Boom is what would happen. But if I put it the other way, I can put this on here. Click. Nothing much would happen. This situation is a little complicated. This is a little bit like the five tube transit transformerless uh, radio. The position of the on off switch has a factor on, on this stuff. Clearly, I don't want this on there. I want it on the other side of the capacitor. Now, the fact is, if this capacitor is shorted, it could be shorted. It could have been shorted this whole time. But because I've got an isolated supply for the radio I've been using up until this moment, I would never know that. So how would I read a dangerous voltage that may be sitting on the chassis right now? And get this meter because it's isolated, right? It's just a battery operated meter. I'm going to set it to 600 volt range. Now this is a very high impedance meter, so it doesn't take much for it to give a reading. So the first thing I would want to do is put one lead on something grounded. Okay, so something grounded is right here. Any all my test equipment is grounded. And then stick this right here. Chassis, are you hot? Well the answer is no. Is this really working? Let's go on to the power line. So there's there's the full power. So the hot line is the one that's switched. The hot line is here. The switch is open right now. So there's nothing here. So I find this a lot more reassuring than using the microamp meter in the in that Sencor device. But what happens if I reverse the switch? Reverse the plug, rather. I haven't done it yet. Just going over these again. Okay, now we're going to reverse the plug. Just making sure I've got no equipment connected. I've got my speakers connected, but for a couple of reasons, that won't matter. Okay, famous last words. Now, we're going to pull the plug out and rotate it and stick it back in. It the other way around. So now if I look here, so now if that's interesting, isn't it? The switch is open, uh, the switch is off, yet I can read all that power there. You know where else I can probably read it? Right here. I might even be able to see it over here. It seems to be everywhere now. Yet the radio is switched off. I don't see it here now. What happened? Well, the radio is switched off. This is now the grounded terminal. Okay. Well, would you get a shock from that? Well, that's a good question. Um, there's 120 volts there with enough power to drive this meter, but that's a tiny, tiny amount of power. It could be, I could put my finger on this, and yes, I would have 120 volts coming at me, but I wouldn't feel a thing because the amount of current is just too low. So I'm getting shocked without knowing it, which is probably not all that important. Often what happens in these situations is you get what's called a tingle shock, 
you get a current restricted shock. So the current is a milliamp or some fraction, um, and you can feel it. And if you've done this work, you know what it feels like, and it's a little scary, but it's not going to kill you. Now, this must generate hums, I would think, in the radio. This makes plugging other equipment, sitting things on top of this metal cabinet, all questionable actions. Have you ever had the case where you've got metal cabinet equipment bumping up against each other like I, like I do over here in my shop? And these things bumping up, they're all bumping up against each other. Now, they all have a common ground wire I finally put in because I got tired of getting brush shocks. <laughs> from it, so I've grounded all the cases of all the equipment in here uh, onto one one wire. You can actually see the wire right over here, this green wire. So some of the equipment is three prong and the cases are generally grounded that way, right from the equipment itself, but other stuff is just like this radio, exactly like this radio. It's a, a two prong plug, it's not polarized, it goes in either which way. So I'm dwelling on this for, for quite a while, because I don't want to get this wrong. Now, let's operate the radio. First of all, I'm just going to go back. You know, I'm going to clip. I'm going to clip the one lead here to my ground wire. Uh, in, in different shops, do things differently. In some shops, you would find all the equipment is ungrounded. Everything is ungrounded. The whole shop is ungrounded. Uh, in other uh, shops, no isolation whatsoever, even for the item under test. I had a shop that worked that way. I had a safety light I used to use to catch a hot chassis situation. Uh, now this is not a hot chassis problem similar to the 5 tube radio issue because there's never a completely direct connection between the chassis and the power line in this radio. It's always through this capacitor. So this capacitor is good. Things are sort of good. But in the really bad hot chassis situation, one wire from the outlet is connected right to the chassis. And depending upon which way you plug it in and whether the set is on or off, you can or cannot get a shock off the uh, chassis. Those radios are inherently dangerous, much more dangerous. Full current is available. Um, not here. The current is restricted by this capacitor. Life-saving capacitor. Oddly enough, its nickname is the death capacitor because if it shorts, death haunts you. Yeah. Um, so we're going to turn this guy on. Let me just double check now and see this out of sight for some reason. My subconscious is doing things my conscious doesn't actually agree with. Turn it back on. Turn it right off. Okay, I'm conscious enough now. So in the current situation, the chassis shows nothing. Now we're going to turn the set on. Boom, this is the first time I've turned it on with uh, in a regular outlet. Now we look, still got zero on this side. What happened? Got a zero. So there's the hot. No. Oh, I'm on DC for crying out loud. Okay, there you go. That's how you get killed. Back here. Got a small voltage of nine volts. Zero, close closer to zero here. Nine volts. Nine volts. It's actual power line coming in. Yeah, we gotta get 120 somewhere. There's 120. So now I'm gonna reverse the plug with the set on. Let's go back here. The chassis is currently reading nine volts above ground. Above above yeah above my house grounding system okay let me pull the plug out here and we'll turn it around stick it back in boom no there won't be any boom no booms this time this guy should read zero 
or so. This guy should show the 120. 120 should be here. What do we get here? <gasps> 112. 12? 22? 12? There's the 9 volts now, I guess. I don't know. Cross here? Isn't that scary? But again, could you get a shock off that? Uh, I could test this. I could put my foot flat on the floor and stick my finger on there. And then you would know by the way I reported. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. How can we find out how dangerous this is before I change that? Because I want to do a before and after thing. Um, trying to make light bulbs light up off of it is one way. Uh, I need a small light bulb. Smallish light bulb. What about a biggie? That is a pretty big one. Oh, it's 100 watts. Let's steal one out of here. Okay, so I think this is a 25 watt bulb. Twenty-five watts. Can we light this bulb? This is tricky. How am I going to do this? So, uh, clip on. Now you can see why I didn't want to use this vacuum tube voltmeter, by the way, or I would have put a house ground right on here. There could be no consequences. Or if this guy is shorted, yow! That would be bad. Okay, so I'm going to clip on here. Hold this here. I'm going to touch this on the chassis. What? What? What do you think? What, what do you? What do you say? You think it's kind of light? I don't. I don't think it's light. If it lights up, hi yay. Okay. So you see nothing whatsoever. But there's 120 volts there. How come this light doesn't light up? no oomph behind it. So as I make this connection, the voltage there will collapse. Wait a minute, that's not making sense what I'm doing. That's not making any sense at all what I'm doing here. What I need to do is hook this back to uh, the house ground. Yeah, right. Okay, so we don't need this here. Yeah, I've done this wrong. Let's do it right. Okay, we'll bring over the house ground through these powerful clip leads. Now we'll find out. Has the chassis got the juice to light this light bulb? No. Right here? Obviously, you can hear the sound coming out of the speaker. So how much juice could you draw out of that? Well, I could take, if I have, do I have an AC ammeter? AC ammeter. I'm looking down here. I don't think I have one. Amps. 20. What if I just put a short using this meter? I clip the meter back to ground. Not recommended, by the way. Clip this to 20 amps. AC. Okay, so it's actually. Boom! No, there's no boom. No response. So now I've got milliamps and microamps fused 
600 milliamps max. milliamps. Hang on tight. Okay, so now we're getting a reading of one milliamp here. I would say that's what that means. One milliamp. Oh, you can feel one milliamp. Okay, so this is the model of us. This is what we are. You touch that thing, touch ground, one milliamp. One milliamp. I'm going to reverse the plug. Plug is reversed. <laughs> Any unexpected results here? Back to voltage. I'm over in the milliamp thing. Ten volts. How many milliamps can you do? Zero. How about if we go down the right scale first? I'll get this right, don't worry. There we go. A little something here. So now this is suggesting, I would say, 0.1 milliamps. Maybe you can't feel that. Turn the set off. Same thing. Oh, now we're getting the 1.4 milliamps. Reverse the plug. No, we see nothing. What does all this mean? I think I was able to draw roughly a milliamp through this. Through the meter, the meter being in amp mode, it's pretty much a short circuit. One hundred twenty volts, one milliamp. Goodness and grief, you would feel that. Question is, is it because of this capacitor? Let me reverse the plug again. beating this one to death. That's if I know uh, when you're going to deal with one of these issues, you really dig into it. You only have to do it once. Really dig down into it. I think this is probably the third time I've done this. There's our one milliamp, assuming I'm doing this correctly. 1.5 milliamps. Would appear to be going through the capacitor. The switch is off, so it's open. This end of the capacitor is no longer connected to anything. Oh, oh, that was silly what I just did. Shameful. Shame on, shame on, shame on. Bip, bip. I think I pretty much. Okay, so when I did that, I think I saw a light come on somewhere. <laughs> did I, did I? I think I went right across the switch there briefly and the actual current flow of the radio was flowing right through here and it turned the lights on on the uh, radio briefly. That was stupid. Okay, try not to be stupid. I'll go back to voltage. Can't do too much harm with the voltage. Testing. Okay, and we're looking here. 
we're seeing the full thing. Now the full thing is there because the set is switched off. This is the weird thing. I turn the set on. And now it's 10 volts. Turn it off. Hmm. You always think, oh, I just turn it off. It should be safe. Turn it off and you got a higher voltage sitting here. Again, how can you get power? Through that guy. Well, what about a brand new capacitor of a similar size? Okay, now this is not the wisest thing I'm doing, but I am insulated on the floor. I don't like it. I'm not going to do that. I'm too chicken. Okay. Say, oh, it's a small gamble, but the wager is very high. The wager is my life. I don't want to do that. Or even embarrassment. Okay, so what about a brand new capacitor? What's that do to this current and stuff? Okay, so this is the same idea here through another capacitor. We still see the 120 volts. My finger's touching that wire there. There's no chance that this has got some kind of serious leak or short circuit in it. It's probably the same as that one. I mean, nothing wrong here. So I'm going to remove this and we're going to give it the leak test now. But first I'm going to unplug the set. So I don't end up making a stupid mistake again. Just leave it unplugged. I'm going to nip this guy out. I'm going to put in a brand new uh, proper capacitor in there. And my nippers. I'm just doing too much here. Okay, I'm going to go right here. I'll leave a little piece just in case. Likewise here. And there it is. So this is not your ordinary capacitor, I don't think. So this looks like DPC, 600 volts. Here it says 10,000. 10,000 watt. In the middle it says tube, like tube is the manufacturer. 10,001. I believe, I have to look again, but I believe this is a 0.01 capacitor. I need to look at the schematic. Let's see what this guy says about it. Thirty nanofarads, so that would be 0 0.03 microfarads. 0 0.03. V loss, eleven percent. Thirty, eh? Okay, I'm just gonna peek myself at the schematic here briefly and tell you that this type say capacitor schematic. This guy is supposed to be 0 0.01. 0 0.01, but it's showing as a 0 0.03. Let's give him the leak test. Ideally, we want there to be no leak at all here. Well, you can see the eye pretty good today. And here we go. That's a failure. That's a failure. And let me just prove this now, because you watch me test so many capacitors. I wonder, is this really real or is this bogus stuff? So here's a brand new capacitor. Right open, 150. Right open, 250. Right open, 350. Right open, 450. Right open. That's what a good one looks like. I'm going to let that 
that sit there just for a moment because I stuck 450 volts on it. It will have soaked into the dielectric a little bit. Okay. Now, it looks to me like I'll put a new capacitor in there, but the same test would reveal the same thing, but maybe not this how much current can you draw out of it test. Now there's other capacitive effects going on, especially with the big transformer here. There's a certain amount of capacitance in there. There's a certain way you could draw some current through it. Um, unexpected current through it. Okay, I gotta find the right capacitors here. Oh, so the, the point of that, what I was saying, even with this capacitor removed, there, can, there still is a capacitive connection between the chassis, the circuitry, and the power line. That's my uh, ham radio repeater going there. And and that capacity could, could, well, I don't know. What is it? I don't know what it is. It's something. Probably effective at RF frequencies. Maybe not very effective at line 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 frequencies too low. Don't know. Okay, I gotta drink coffee because I'm starting to ramble. One of the things I believe to be true is that if you can explain something then you understand it. And often I find when I go to explain things, which I try to avoid in these videos as much as I can, especially around safety, uh, often I find out, oh, I thought I knew this, but when I go to explain it, things don't work out quite so well. So hopefully that's not the case here. But I would invite you to read a uh, website or a page at a website called Just Radios. Just Radios, one word. That's a company, a small, a small company here in Canada that, that sells capacitors. In fact, they, I bought these from them. I buy all these from them too. Um, I have no relationship with this company other than I'm a customer with uh, some regularity, I suppose. Um, so I've got two capacitors sitting here. Now on the camera they look almost the same color, but to my eye this is orange. This is distinctly orange. Wow, is that ever bad on the camera? And this is yellow. Oh my gosh, they look exactly the same. Well they aren't. This is orange. This is smaller and this is bigger. This one's called an X-type capacitor. This one's called a Y-type capacitor. This is the one we're going to want to use in this radio. The Y-type. It's a bigger one. So what's going on here? Well, there's two types of capacitors here. These are, are ruggedized capacitors. They're uh, not likely to catch fire if they fail, that kind of stuff. Uh, and they can probably sustain a fire uh, better because they're involved right with the power line in a radio. So pick a picture of this radio catching fire because you threw your cigarette butt inside it and the wooden cabinet's now on fire and you're starting to burn these, these capacitors. They're hooked right up to the line. Some of them are connected right across the line, across the line, across the line. Looks like an X. X-type capacitors go across the line. These are less critical. Uh, that location right across the power line is less critical, even though you might think the opposite, because it's right across the power line. I mean, you're counting on your house circuit breaker if this thing should short to, to, to interrupt the current. And, for crying out loud, if you've got a 15 amp fuse or a 15 amp breaker in your uh, circuit in your um, uh, fuse box or circuit breaker box, um, and you think, well, the most current that can come through is 15 amps because once that happens, it, it opens. That's not what happens. That is not what happens. For a brief period during a full short circuit in your house, what comes through to that short circuit is limited by the transformer on the pole outside your house. Some of the wiring coming into your house, there's a little bit of impedance there in that. Now you can get 100 amps or even more coming through the fault. Now only going to last for a few seconds, a few seconds, a few cycles before the circuit breaker or the fuse blows. But in the meantime, you can have a whopping amount of power dumped into a shorted capacitor by the way. So this guy is designed not to explode. It should it should just, if it shorts, it should burn open, I guess, and safely inside it. And then you just have an open capacitor sitting in your radio, no longer filtering the light. But nothing really bad would have happened. And maybe you'd realize it. 
um, you might realize it because your radio burned down, but you might realize it because the radio doesn't operate the same anymore. It's picking up noise now. A little tricky to, 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 to realize this is the problem. But this kind, this X type, is not in the radio. What's in the radio is this. Now this says type D on it. I couldn't find anything on the internet about type D. This is probably an old an old um, li labeling system and the new labeling system is X and Y. And there's X 1, 2, 3, and 4 and Y 1, 2, 3, and 4 also. The higher the number, the higher the withstand voltage. Because another problem with the power line is you don't know what's coming in on it. There's motors that are the being turned off and when the switch opens a huge impulse of voltage can be sent back through the power line and into every other appliance that's operating on the line there. H how huge? I don't know. And you could get a lightning strike and the lightning doesn't have to strike the power line or your antenna. It just has to strike the ground somewhere near your location and you can get weird voltage effects in that which would pop the capacitor that's sitting across the line Maybe even one that's sitting the way this one was, between the line and the chassis here. So why this one? This is a Y, type Y capacitor, Y2, it says right on it. This is a 0.02, this is a 0.01. Electrically or electronically, either one's going to work in this radio and do the job. The thing about this one, this bigger one, is that if it's hit by a bolt of lightning or whatever it might be, that does cause it to fail, it's designed to fail open. It's designed to not short out. Now, how they've done this, I don't know. Maybe this one's designed similarly. I don't know what's going on with this. But this guy's leaky, so he, his, he's not doing the job anyway. He's become a big resistor. So, if this guy fails open, then the chassis, whoops, the chassis will not be connected. Where's the plug on this? making sure it's not plugged in. <laughs> before I drop something inside there and demonstrate what I'm talking about. So this is the guy to use in this circumstance because if it fails, it will fail open. Will this thing become leaky in the long run? Well, you know, I don't know, but I won't be around to check it out anyway. So if this thing does become leaky, it's so far down the road, I, I, I just can't imagine it's a concern. So this is the guy to put in. I have very few of these. These are a little more expensive. These X ones are cheapo. Now, would it be okay to put in just your standard one? You know, these are probably built pretty well. Uh, modern components are probably built pretty well. Uh, this could fail into a short circuit. It's possible. If it did, then you would have a real danger in this radio. The chance of that happening is very, very remote. Certainly, for some number of decades, I think it would be very, very remote. So if you've been using you know, just this kind of capacitor, um, probably not the end of the world. But this is really what you should be using in here. And it's just barely going to fit in there. And its purpose will be to uh, prevent any RF interference that's in the power line in your house house is full of this stuff these days from getting all the way into the radio now should I put this in and put this in I suppose I could you know that's a that's an interesting question why isn't there one across the power line you want to go on the switch side um, well, one reason is it's an extra capacitor. It costs more money to put in the radio. It raises the price of the radio. Um, functionally, getting rid of noise, this is probably doing the trick. So putting one across the line, it, it, you know, one or the other, but both not really needed. Probably, probably that's the story there. Uh, there's different ways of doing these uh, on the line, by the way. You can, come, you can take two capacitors, uh, one from each line. You'd have another Y type coming from here, going to the chassis too. You could do that, um, but I think it's probably best just to do what the engineers who designed this did, even though it was back in the uh, 40s when they did this. So I'm just going to put this guy in now. Can we detect any interference changes? Well, this is this is an interesting question. 
Um, that is an interesting question. Why don't we try to find that out? Is operating this with nothing there? Well, you can think of the incoming AC circuit as being my hand here. <laughs> and then you have the radio. I'll just use the radio. So, so you have the incoming circuit getting into the radio, right? It's going in the primary winding here, the incoming power circuit. And if there's noise, all kinds of noise on it, you can think that noise is, is going to affect the radio. Um, but this is a terrible explanation of this. Uh, yeah, it's really terrible. Well, I keep going with it. Though this is now, don't quote me on any of this, please. Don't quote me on anything at all. Would it not be the case that if I just left this the way it is now, this big piece of metal becomes an antenna, and this this is connected intimately throughout the radio. So if this thing starts picking up some noise, it's going to potentially affect the radio. Conversely, or along with it actually, what if, what if this thing is sending noise in. It's sending noise in, and the noise can be picked up by the metal chassis, which is just floating here like an antenna. So to de-antenna the chassis, in goes a capacitor between the line coming in and the chassis. There it is here. And now any RF that's in here is is uh, quelled. Quelled would be the word for that. It becomes unimportant because it's not generating voltage differences uh, in the radio anymore. There's no, there's none of this. <laughs> this is the worst explanation you've ever heard. Okay, if you notice too, uh, if you watch lots of my videos, you know I like to take these things real slow because uh, my brain only operates at a certain speed. And while it's pleasant to watch videos and stuff like that where people are explaining things, rapid, 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 you know, those videos where they cut the fraction of a second out between words and <laughs> any little hesitation gets cut out. Uh, watching those and experiencing them is great but I find I actually don't absorb that much in the long run from them I, I need time that's why I run and have a coffee and stuff like that to kind of allow my brain to soak this stuff up properly this is my one really deep run into this uh, issue I don't think I'll ever have to do it again I've done hundreds of radios and I've only had a relatively okay understanding of all this now it's now it's better at least I fooled myself into thinking it's better so I'm gonna put this this guy in before though let's operate the radio without it um, how, how, I, well, what I need I need a noise source I go start my car up in the garage some kind of noise source well maybe well there's all kinds of noise sources in here RF noise sources but I always imagine them to be just kind of floating around in the ether here and getting into the radio through the antenna or, or into the sensitive parts of the radio. Um, could, 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 could those noises serve this purpose for testing this? Turn on, we'll turn on the radio, fiddle around with it, then I'll, I can, I can do this. I don't think that's dangerous to do. And we can, we can literally hear the the come and go, <laughs> if there is any come and go. Before I do this, I think I'm just going to take a little break. Okay, let's get on with this. I do have a nice noise source in my shop here, which happens to be some of the lighting. Now I am plugging this into my isolation transformer. Perhaps that negates all this, but we can try this first and then try a regular outlet try it this way and that way try 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 okay the radio is switched off right now I'll switch it on and then we'll turn the power on here we go okay very good let it warm up so okay no noise filtering what does the radio do band should we do this on? Let's do this on the broadcast band because it's the most sensitive to, to noise, I think. Volume down. I have no antenna connected. 
should put a little antenna on it. Just a little piece of wire. Feed in some noise from the shop. There we are. Okay, now there's all kinds of noises here. There's radio sort of atmospheric noise. There's internal noises from the radio itself. Uh, um, electron noise, can we call it that? But then I, don't, I think all we're hearing is all oh, sounds pretty normal to me. Okay, so I'm going to introduce some noise by cranking up the supply to these lights to the point where they're overloaded. Didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, how am I going to do this? There's no noise here to hear. Let's go up a band. Okay, try my light trick again. There we are. Okay, so I believe what's happening there is a voltage regulator in these uh, LED lights I'm using. And when the voltage gets too high, the regulator starts doing its thing, and I think that's where we hear the, uh, the noise from. So good, we got a noise source. Now, I'm gonna just put this in here. What would we expect to happen? Expect a jump. Okay, so I, I don't know if you can hear this. I hear a hum faint hum and that hum disappears entirely when I put this here a little bit unexpected hmm okay now we're gonna turn on the noise here Quickly now, you're burning out your LED lights. Wow, son of a gun. Let's go across the power line. Quickly, Jim. Okay. With the X type, don't blow up in my hand, please. why I like doing these experiments. Well maybe it's because I've got it plugged into an isolation transformer. So let's let's plug it into a regular outlet. This will make things just one big step more dangerous for me. Here we go. Unpolarized plug randomly shoved in. I don't know which way is which. I don't hear that hum now. Okay, what happens? It's a very low frequency hum that seems to disappear. Slightly higher frequency one doesn't change. It's more hum, more hum with it in. But my hand is holding onto this capacitor. So you know, I'm a big hum source. Parents used to complain about that all the time. Here we go. No, didn't make any difference. Worse with it in. And now we'll introduce the noise. Worse. Okay, we're going to reverse the plug. Sounds about the same. The level of hiss increased. Uh, 
hum level like this it went down, the low hum went down. It's a little hard to hear the hum over the noise. You can hear the hum now. So with the hiss getting louder. That suggests to me that this idea of uh, allowing the radio to take advantage of the grounding of the electric system by putting in this capacitor uh, basically between the B minus or the yeah, I'll have to call it the B minus part of the radio, which is the, what the chassis is. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> this is 10,000. The schematic says 0 0.01. This must be 10,000 picofarads. Oh, it says right there. I can see MMF, picofarads. So 10,000 picofarads. 0.01. So it's just about uh, dinner time here. In fact, I've been uh, working on the uh, video that you've been watching, and uh, I've been watching it very carefully M myself. I'm very concerned that there may be things I'm saying, even accidentally, that might be misleading about this. So I hope you appreciate it. I'm taking my time and trying to uh, make sure there isn't some hidden thing that I don't understand. And, you know, that's often the state we're in throughout our lives, isn't it? But in this case, I really want to get this right. And I've already brought in a polarized uh, plug because after this, I am just never going to feel comfortable with this kind of plug on the end of this radio. It's uh, not this one, that's for sure. Okay, so I just feel a little better sticking this little piece of video onto the end of, uh, of what you've been watching. And uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm probably just going to start by soldering that guy in and carrying on. But Maybe not. <laughs>